Hey guys and welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be my top five fragrances for life winter edition. So if you guys have been watching my channel, you guys know that I want to do my top 10 fragrances for life, but I thought it would be fun to start doing them seasonal. So I started last year in spring. I've done summer and fall and now we are up to winter and I am going to be doing a bonus video with my top five every day all year long top five fragrances because I did find five very easily one that moved from winter and went into that category just because that's how I am <laughs> I like to make things more difficult so when we finally do my top 10 it's really going to be narrowing down 25 fragrances down to 10. so i do have a few honorable mentions just because i want you guys to know how i got to my top five i am more of a seasonal wearer and i tend to gravitate towards a certain type of fragrance around winter time they're not as gourmand i would say or if they are considered gourmand they have like patchouli they have more of a woody base they're just a little bit more deeper fragrances that i tend to wear in winter and fragrances that i don't really wear in the high heat of summer but let's go ahead and get into the video okay so the first two we're gonna go over are my honorable mentions these were in a top life video which i'll also link below we have here two patchouli fragrances we have coco mademoiselle by chanel and then we have angel the eau de parfum by mugler and these are very different fragrances but they both are very nostalgic fragrances to me and this one did make the list and then i got knocked out at the last minute well they both got knocked out at the last minute this is actually my scent of the day it's one that less is more this is a fragrance that is a little hard for me to describe this has so many notes it doesn't smell like anything i have in my collection it has a lot going on and it's a very polarizing fragrance this is a scent that i reserve only for cold weather which is why i'm wearing it today because it is cooler here in orlando this is again it's all over the place i think that's why this scent is kind of polarizing it is considered a gourmand i don't consider it a gourmand i do get that this has some gourmand touches this to me is more of a patchouli bomb this is an obnoxious kind of fragrance it's loud it's out there it's one that i would reserve for going out when i want to get noticed because this is kind of an attention grabbing scent i've gotten more compliments but i feel like it's one that if someone doesn't like it they're just not saying it to you so i do think this fragrance is divided but it's one that i can live without but it is very 90s in a bottle this fragrance reminds me of a particular year in my life when I was transitioning from up north to Florida. And this was just a very popular fragrance. So it kind of holds a lot of meaning. So that's why I wanted to honorably mention this one. And then another honorable mention, this one's just going into my top signature scent. So spoiler, this is going in a top five, but I am moving it out of winter. This is a fragrance that reminds me of the winter, more specifically around Christmas time. And like going to the department store and this was always like a top seller. This is a citrusy white floral patchouli fragrance. It's fresh, it's classy. Another honorable mention, this would have been in my winter, but this is again, spoiler, going into my top five signature fragrances. Right. So kicking off my top five, I was going back and forth between these two fragrances. I did prefer one, but not only is the fragrance discontinued, but it is getting harder and harder to find. Even when I find it online, it's like double, triple the price. But we have two from Tom Ford. We have Tom Ford of Velvet Orchid. And this is in no particular order. I'm just starting it off with these two. And then we have Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme. Now I do want to get my nose on the extreme because you guys have told me that it's what replace this one and it's even like better performing this is just my kind of vanilla this is a warm spicy sweet lectonic vanilla but this is getting harder to find so this is an on another honorable mention but this would have beat tom ford velvet orchid but this is another one that i love so i knew i wanted one of these two fragrances and this one i still I think eventually it is going to be discontinued, but I still see it at Sephora and at discounters. And this is easier to find. This is your grown kind of boozy 
white floral fragrance. There's a sweetness to this one from the honey. Again, this is boozy. This one has rum. This has fantasy notes of different, I think there's like several orchid notes in here. I believe this one has jasmine. This one is like a bouquet of flowers. There's a lot of florals in here. This one's more mature. This again is more of a grown up kind of boozy floral. Very sexy. So again, this is Tom Ford's Velvet Orchid. So one of the fragrances that I picked at the last minute because it kind of represents a lot of those kind of sexy gourmand fragrances like your La Vie Belle, your La Nuit Tresor by Lancome, your Flower Bomb. I wanted a fragrance like that, but also one that Dennis enjoyed. I think in every season I have a favorite of Dennis's and I do enjoy this one. It's not a favorite of mine, but I do enjoy it and I and I just love wearing fragrances that he enjoys. But that is Carolina Herrera's Good Girl. This is another polarizing scent in the community. A lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it. This is, this is another one that's got a lot going on. It's got a lot of notes. For me, it kind of opens up fresh. It has bergamot, so there's something fresh in the opening in this one. And then it does settle down to be more of kind of a floral fragrance with gourmand touches. This one has, I believe it's praline. It has cacao, bitter almond. It's one that, again, has a lot going on. I feel like fragrances that have a lot going on are usually the polarizing fragrances in the designer realm. But this smells a lot like a very popular niche fragrance. I think it's Killian Rolling in Love. I believe that's the one I tested and I'm like, this smells like good girl. <laughs> I don't know which one came out first, but that one has a burnt rubber scent to it that I don't get in this one. And this was just sexy and date night to me. So coming in, in the number four spot, we have Carolina Herrera's A Very Good Girl. So we got a fragrance for him. And you know that I need a fragrance for me. This is one that was an honorable mention in fall. And it's one that Dennis doesn't care for. But that is Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. I knew I wanted a fruity floral. And this one's a fruity floral... A little sweeter it is one that i tend to wear year round like i'll just get i'll just crave this scent this one has a lot of notes even though in the beginning it only listed i think pear vanilla and jasmine i think it was in the beginning and then quentin beach on his instagram did include i think there's leather in here vetiver well i knew there was vetiver vetiver might have always been there but I've learned that on top of vetiver, Dennis doesn't care for leather notes. So I wonder if he's picking up. I don't pick up the leather. Like I do get something fresh about this one. Like maybe if there's bergamot in this one. But there is something kind of fresh. But then there's something juicy coming from the pear. There's something sweet that's coming from the vanilla. And this does have kind of a woody base, which is the vetiver. I just find this one to be super sexy. I really enjoy this one. This is up for me fragrance. So again, that is Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. All right, next, I wanted a date night fragrance, another one. This is kind of another for me fragrance. This is one that I would say he doesn't dislike, but it's not one he goes out of his way to compliment me on, but this is a favorite of mine. But that is Kayali's Elixir 11. You guys know that I love the note of apple. And I also love rose fragrances. I wasn't a rose person, or at least I didn't think I was. And then I learned I am. This is, I think this one has jasmine, but to me this is a rosy fragrance. This is apple, rose, and patchouli. But this combination, oh my goodness. This is getting sweeter the longer it sits. I believe this one has vanilla as well. But this, I really pick up on a juicy apple, a juicy red apple. Again, rose. The rose in here is a little bit more of your vintage rose, which I'm not crazy about. But I don't know if it's with the apple and the patchouli. This is giving me like Snow White vibes. <laughs> like just biting into a juicy red apple that's probably poisonous. I'm a Kayali stan. I love both of her apple fragrances. This is more of the sexy again dark 
sweet apple. And this one's considered a floral fruity fragrance. So a couple of fruity florals in here. This one to me is more date night, whereas La Belle is a little bit more fun and playful. So again, that's Kayali Elixir 11. Okay, and then coming in in my last spot, these two again were fragrances that were last minute. One's an honorable mention because I was going back and forth. I was going back and forth because these are two fragrances that I've been wearing recently. They're both warm, spicy, but they're completely different fragrances. They don't smell anything alike. That is Van Cleef and Arpel's Rose Rouge and Athalia by Parfum de Mali. So if you guys can guess which one ended up being my pick for my last spot, again, in no particular order, leave it in the comment section below. So the one I did end up going, and this was a hard choice. Again, these are two totally different fragrances, but the one I ended up going with was Rose Rouge. And that's because it's another rose. It's an intoxicating rose. This one's more of your jammy sweet rose this one's again warm spicy this one has a vetiver so it's kind of sexy but it's blended very well in this one this one has black currant which is where the the sexy intoxicating fruitiness is coming from it has pink pepper it has rose raspberry vetiver cacao pod vanilla patchouli benzo and this is just a sexy jammy rose gorgeous so this ended up being this ended up being my last pick in my top five but i was going back and forth because recently i wore athalia and athalia is a fragrance that i enjoy i don't know i've never loved it and then the other day the other day i wore it and i could not stop smelling myself it definitely got deeper i think this one has vanilla i don't know something about it got creamy to me and this doesn't have any notes that make you believe that there's something creamy but it's the same creamy powderiness that i get in narciso in that kind of white cube this one has a spiciness that i never used to get i don't know if there's pepper in this one this has orange blossom that i don't get and to me this is more of a powdery sexy slightly spicy maybe even slightly incensey mature floral fragrance and again, there's something about it that's kind of like creamy, but I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, this has definitely gotten spicy. There's something that's tickling my nose in this one, and I don't think they list pepper. But it's almost like a pepperiness that I never used to get. And then there's something slightly incensey about this one as well. This one is said to have orange blossom, iris, white musk, and amber. This is more powdery, iris, musky. And I would almost throw something... I don't want to say electonic, but it's the same kind of creaminess that I get in the Narciso cubes. Even though they don't list something creamy, it's the same vibe that I get in those fragrances that I'm starting to get in this one. So this was a close, a close pick, but in the end, I did go for Van Cleef and Arpels Rose Root. So those are my top five fragrances for winter time again this was a little harder than i thought because even though we don't get a lot of winter these are fragrances that i do enjoy during this time of year a lot of these i do wear at night if i don't wear them in winter because i do find them to be very sexy i don't know i tend to wear more sexy grown fragrances in winter time but let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite winter fragrances that will do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.